Hi everyone, I wanted to uh, focus on the pump in this video. Uh, a lot of people have been asking about the pump and the specifications of the pump, um, see what it can handle and how it compares to other pumps. So I'm just going to run through that in this video. Um, first off, it's a, it is a 220 volt pump, um, so it plugs into the mains. Um, our mains cable runs through there and into the back door. Uh, and there's an outlet inside the kitchen there, uh, which I plug it into. Um, yeah, so at, the, at night I need to unplug it and uh, so that I can close the door. Uh, I might still come up with a solution to uh, take the cable into one of those, uh, through one of those air bricks into the house, so it's a more permanent uh, scenario. But uh, yeah, or you might want to drill a, if you're able to drill a hole through the wall, uh, you can do that and feed your cable through there. But it is 220 volt, it's not a 12 volt pump. Uh, it's a single phase pump uh, with uh, 50 hertz uh, frequency and it draws 550 watts of power um, at 2.39 amps of current uh, for those that are interested in those sorts of specifications. Um, the outlet there uh, of the pump is a one and one quarter inch outlet um, my understanding is that that translates to a 25 millimeter diameter pipe. This is a 25 millimeter diameter pipe, um, and I've reduced that further to a 20 millimeter hose pipe. Um, and with that sort of configuration, using a 30 meter length of hose pipe, uh, I get the the spray diameter that I showed on the previous video. Um, and it works quite well. On a 12, if you reduce that to a 12 millimeter hose pipe, uh, the pressure is much lower because of the increased friction and um, you don't get a very wide uh, spraying or spraying diameter on a sprinkler. But uh, just back to the pump, the maximum flow um, of the pump is rated at 8,000 hours per, uh, sorry, 8,000 liters per hour. Now that's without any. That's at, at the outlet there, without any height difference or um, reducing the the outflow. Um, and then the other specification that they give is that the maximum head, so the maximum height that the pump can pump the water to, is seven meters. Um, and in addition, at four meters elevation, so if it pumps up to four meters it'll still pump 4,000 liters per hour. Um, and that basically, yeah, comes, that, that's quite sufficient for this, this type of use. Um, the other nice feature of this pump is that it's got a built-in floating switch or float switch. Uh, some pumps, you can buy submersible pumps without float switches and then you can, uh, buy a separate float switch which attaches to it and, and you can configure it like that but basically how this this works this is the float switch um, and as it as the water rises this this floats on top of the water and as it lifts past uh, sort of 90 degrees uh, sorry 180 degree, flat a uh, flat level um, there's a switch that switches on the pump um, inside this thing and then as it drops down again it switches the pump off uh, you can adjust the height at which it switches on and off by adjusting the length of this tether to the pump. Um, so here you see it takes longer to switch on and longer to switch off. Um, for this container the switch on works quite well at that sort of length where see the top of the tank is there and so you want it to switch on at that height. Um, that's basically it. Uh, I've been really impressed with the pump. It's fairly quiet. Um, it makes a bit more noise like this because it's sucking in air because the, the pump is uh, partially emerged from the water. Um, but uh, yeah, if you have any other questions about the pump, uh, feel free to uh, drop me a line and let me know. If you're interested in purchasing the pump, um, comment uh, below with your email address and I'll get hold of you to give you the details around that. Thank you.